guys, Austin Dunham back again with another live stream. Welcome to live stream episode five. Now we're on live stream episode five. And you might be wondering who is this guy right here? Oh, well, this guys? this is Kenneth right here. I'm sure you um, all know me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> bro, this is live. I know. <laughs> all right, so you, you guys probably saw him in the Orlando vlog um, back over summer if you're, you know, not a new su subscriber. My partner. Yeah. So um, he's here chilling out for the weekend, and I decided why not bring him on the live stream because, you know, he got some, a little bit of experience of what we're going to talk about today. And if you see the title, today we're going to talk about how you can go from weightlifting to calisthenics, right? How to make that transfer easier and some things you should know before starting because a lot of people, like, when they start calisthenics, they don't just start, like, from nothing. Usually a lot of people go from weightlifting to calisthenics, and to make that transition easier, easier i'm just going to give you uh some quick tips and also he'll interject some of his opinions and tips for you guys all right so haven't worked out today but you know after this we are gonna go work out and of course I'm gonna do some calisthenics but first yeah. the first point i have is that you want to educate yourself on body weight training and calisthenics so um what do you guys think i mean when i say educate yourself like, when I say educate yourself, is obviously you want to know what you're getting yourself into, basically. So, we all know that push-ups, pull-ups, um, dips, and stuff like that. But um, a lot of people really don't understand calisthenics and how you can uh, progress with it. So, that's exactly uh, what my channel is for, too. So, not, not to put you on the spot, Kenneth, but... <laughs> that was fast. <laughs> but, but real quick, like... Um, Let's say, all right, so when you heard about calisthenics, I guess, did I introduce you to calisthenics? Was it me or like, did you like know about the, the style of training before I started doing it? I knew about calisthenics before you mm -hmm. brought it up, but I didn't know how serious it was until mm -hmm. you brought it up. I didn't realize like it was that big of something. So to me, calisthenics was just, you know, basic body weight training. I didn't think it was that far of something. And then you opened up my eyes to like, the, the, the workouts from it like it's actually a workout to me it was yeah. just oh you can just do push-ups and stuff like that I was like I already do calisthenics it was nothing to me but then you opened up like the, the field the yeah it just went big I was like okay and that awesome. proves my point right there like um before like I started doing calisthenics um he just assumed that like bodyweight training was just your I mean it is just your normal push-ups pull-ups and dust and stuff like that however he didn't know like all the different variations and moves and stuff you can do um with it and also i forgot to mention this but the five bodyweight secrets is still available right now um link will be down below in the description you know you also get the sauce guy with it i'm teaching him how to get the sauce right now you already Learn. know he hey. he got the chain on <laughs> so showing the watch okay like he, he's got a little bit of sauce almost too. there guys almost you know i'm there. teaching almost him there. so yeah bro i'll show i'll show you the sauce guy like i'm gonna show you it yeah all right but awesome so remember this week, um, it's really cheap, $9, and you get the free sauce guide with it. So check down below in the description, all right? So that was our first point. You want to educate yourself. And then once you educate yourself on bodyweight training and calisthenics, then from there, you know, um, I feel like uh, you'll go in with a better understanding of what it is. And then from there, you know, you might make better progress. So the next thing I want to talk about, so if you're transferring from weightlifting to calisthenics, uh, as with all things first, you want to establish your goals. Like, what, it, what is your goal with bioweight training and calisthenics? Don't just blindly go into it just because you think it's cool. Like, actually establish some goals that you want to do. So, do you want to get more ripped? Do you want to get stronger or just more comfortable with your body weight? Uh, do you just simply want to learn a handstand? So, um, establish your goals. For me, my goals when I, when I went into it, I wanted to lose fat. Because believe it or not, I didn't have a six pack. Like I was skinny, but I did not have a six pack. So I wanted to lose fat, build muscle, and um, get more comfortable with my body weight, do all those cool uh, moves. So um, let's say, so if you if you were um, transferring with calisthenics, what would be your goals with body weight training? So you're saying, what would, what's my goal for calisthenics? Yeah, yeah like yeah, what is your personal goal with calisthenics? Like what motivates you? If you were like to completely change over your training style, the calisthenics like mm. some people like for me it was like losing fat, building muscle, and just being comfortable with my body. But for some people, I honestly it's a mixture of 
Like all three, uh, mm-hmm. the three. So I like you can build muscle with calisthenics. Like there's a big myth that you can't, but you are you really can. Mm-hmm. And I like the the idea, and I like the 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 results that I've gotten from building muscle with it. Um, the strength I've also gotten from it is a little more difficult for me to gain. But when I uh you know keep progressing with my movements, I guess I I do see the strength gain. But I guess the biggest overall factor that I like the most when I get the strength is the the tricks I can do with it. So yeah. I'm more of the guy that kind of impresses me the most. And then I like to use those tricks to go back to go build more strength. So I like to, you know, do handstand push-ups or, you know, um, planche progressions basically to build strength. I like that idea. So mm-hmm. it's hard to explain kind of, but that's the idea of what I progress to do. And so, okay. So that makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. So that's perfect. Basically, like I said, you want to establish some goals of what you want to do with body weight training. Just once again, don't blindly go into it if you are coming from weightlifting. So now um, I'm going to get into my third point and I wrote down have a beginner mindset. So a big problem I see with a lot of people who go from weightlifting to calisthenics and I see this in the gym too because I'll be in the gym working out whatever and then um, some guy who lifts weights thinks they can come and do the same exact stuff that I'm doing and then they come to realize that hey I can't. So remember that weightlifting to calisthenics there isn't going to be a lot of carryover or transfer of strength i mean you'll have some basic stuff like you'll be able to do push-ups maybe some pull-ups but the advanced moves it's a skill it takes time uh, to learn so have that beginner mindset when you come in don't think like oh i can bench press 300 pounds and now that means i can do planche push-ups that's not gonna work out right no but the good thing about calisthenics is i might make another video about this is that vice versa though I don't know why, but there's a good transfer. Like, if you're able to do no legs push ups, planche push ups, more than likely you're going to be able to bench press quite a bit. So, that's what I've seen. But, vice versa, from weightlifting and calisthenics, that's not true. And I'm sure, like, you can agree with that too. Like, well, can I interject though? Yeah, yeah. I believe, honestly, weightlifting can transfer to calisthenics, but it's the way you train in weightlifting. So, when you're doing bench press, that, for example, does not transfer to planche push-ups because mm-hmm. the bar is above your chest or it's on your chest. But when you're plant, when you're doing planching, your hand placement is right by your hips. Yeah, your waist. So if you really wanted that to carry over, when you're carrying the bar, when you're doing a bench press, you really should lock your arms out and have the bar down by your waist. That will give you better, a better progression, in yeah. my opinion, towards that. But you don't do that. You don't do that really. I mean, in that press. case, so that, in that case, it, there would be a. He, what he's saying is that, it. yeah, exactly. What he's yeah. saying is that if you were to do a bench press where your hands super dead like that, bring the bar to your waist, come down and bench press like that, then that's, yes. And then if you were to, the, to put the weight higher and yeah. progress with the weight, that would give you a better uh, transition over to, you know, pseudo planche push ups. And the same with if you do on lat pull downs, actually. I'd say lat pull downs for me. Personally, the way I do my pull-ups, I do exactly like lat pull-downs. That actually does carry over to my, my, my pull-ups just because of the way I do my form. People do pull-ups different ways, but the way I, I do like a 45-degree angle, you know, mm-hmm. kind of arching, uh, arching my back, uh, you know, back. Yeah. I, uh, I do the same thing with a lat pull-down. I use the exact same form, and then that carries over to my actual pull-up. But that's weird. weird but uh, the, the jinx. But <laughs> <laughs> another thing, it's weird, though, because I've seen like... Like kind of not overweight people, but very stocky people who can do a lot on the light pull down, but they can't do a lot of body weight pull ups. You but look at I mean? their form though. Yeah. Is their form the same? Because uh, sometimes it's you have to the way people do pull ups. Sometimes some people you know will kind of jerk up a little bit. Some people go straight up. Yeah. I like to kind of keep my distance from the uh, from the actual you know top of the bar. So I kind of you know kind of back up a little bit. I like to arc uh, you know have a forty five degree angle. And stuff like some people can go straight up. It all depends on the angle of how you do your pull-ups. And then if you see how you're doing a lat pull-down and you do the same angle, like it, it pretty much kind of does transfer, transfer over. It's all of the mind-muscle connection and mind-body yeah. connection. Those are two differences. But if you can get those two to relate. Yeah. For me, it has related, honestly. I, I, I don't know. Same. But again, once again, like going from the opposite look of things, I can do the whole stack on the <laughs> lat pull-down machine. <laughs> I can do the whole entire stack easy. Right? But look at your weighted pull-ups, though. Exactly. I can do, um, well, I just hit a PR on weighted pull-ups. What did I pull? I pulled 180 pounds for a clean rep. So, I mean, I guess. But the point here is that I'm trying to make is that uh, if you're a weightlifting and you've been doing it for a few years, uh, just don't expect to do, like, the super advanced moves. Like, yeah. um, as usual, have that beginner mindset and follow the progression 
as a beginner would do because truth is even though you have been working out you still are a beginner um to a whole new training style so if i want if i want to do like mma or boxing or like something i'm not going to go in there just sparring somebody on the is it sparing or sparring i'm an idiot is it sparring i don't know we're about to get roasted out here <laughs> sparring yeah sparring sparring sparring, sparring. okay i want to go in there and spar somebody on the first day right so i will work I work on my my punches. I work on my kicks. You know, I would start from the beginning. I want to be like, oh, I do calisthenics, and since I do bodyweight training, I'm already good. I, I have the strength, so you know, have the um, beginner mindset. Yeah. All right. So, um, so those are pretty much the top three points I would give to somebody who has been weightlifting and wants to transfer over to calisthenics now after um we're going to review this just really quickly but after i'll answer some questions so go ahead and start typing out your questions right now and get them ready so today we talked about um first you want to educate yourself on the topic of bodyweight training um that way you don't like blindly just get into it and have no idea what's going on you know and that's what my channel is, channel is for once again um and the second establish your goals what do you want to learn or get with bodyweight training like actually write it down and then third have that beginner mindset all right don't go in the in the gym all cocky or whatever so ego lifting basically. yeah ego lifting with calisthenics yeah. is possible yeah yeah now, I, I want to say i do it because you know Showing i can do everything <laughs> <laughs> so oh, yeah man. so let's go ahead and answer some questions remember um, link down below, five secrets, top of the description. So, is it fine to superset every set? Uh, so, the way I went about supersetting and what I do now, um, I wouldn't superset every single set per Like, it's corner if you're talking about supersetting or drop setting, or if you're doing uh, supersetting with weights or with bodyweight training. I'm gonna assume you're talking about bodyweight training, all right? Um, I wouldn't do it every single set. You can do separate body parts every single set, but let's say you're doing uh, like pull-ups to Australian Australian rows. I wouldn't do it every set. Probably like the last set. Uh, it's very popular to superset on the last set of the exercise and like just go all out. So you ever superset before? I superset, but for me, I superset different body parts. So I wouldn't do if I'm training back. I wouldn't superset, you know, from pull-ups to you know Australian rows or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I would do more of like. You know, maybe pull ups to, to push ups, for example. Like okay, I'm trying yeah. two different body parts for, for supersetting because I like to preserve that energy so just so I can stay heavy. Exactly. Like that for my workout, I don't yeah. like to burn out just so I can get a more intense workout for me. That just works for my progression. It depends on your body overall. Yeah, so that's what I like doing. I like going, I like supersetting on my skills sometimes. So planche and the front lever. And the reason is because they literally work the totally opposite muscles you see, on each a, other. That's a good example. So, yeah. yeah it's, so that way you have like your strength to do the skill as proficiently as possible. Exactly, all the techniques. Are... All right, I'm trying to read some comments real quick. All right, salute from Argentina. What's up, Argentina? All right, how should you organize what muscle groups you work out in a day? So I feel like this goes with um, something called progressive training segmentation and basically states that um, whether or not you're beginner, intermediate, advanced, and that's that's the way you should train, right? And that's how my um, program is laid out, the bodyweight bodybuilder. But um, basically, I just answered it. It's corner if you're a beginner, intermediate, advanced, how often you can work out, um, what fix in your schedule. So um, I can't give you like a clear cut answer, but you know, it just depends on all those factors. Mm -hmm. All right, let's try and read some more questions. How do I get over fatigue? Uh, fatigue when working out. Uh, make sure that I eat enough protein, that I, I sleep at least six to eight hours I try to, and drink my water. You have a strong mindset as well. Strong like mindset, yeah. Uh, was it mind over matter? Yeah. Mind over matter. And a good music playlist as well also helps sometimes, you know. Music? Yeah. Yeah. We'll definitely add that in. Alright. What is the best way to build up muscle? That's such a generic question, but I'll still answer it for you. <laughs> <laughs> so you wanna it's 
progressive overload. Apply it with weightlifting or Caltex, whatever uh, you may do, and then stay consistent. Make sure that your diet is decent. Make sure you're getting in enough protein and um, staying consistent with it. Then over time, um, tweak your program to where uh, you can go after your weak points and then like look at your body as a statue and just carve it where you need some stuff at, you know? All right, people are asking, who is the guy next to me? So if you're late to the live stream, this is Kenneth right here. Um, he was in my Orlando vlog. He stays in Orlando and, you know, we've been friends for... Since fifth grade. Since fifth grade. And I'm a senior in college right now, so quite a long time. Yeah. You know, earlier I was talking about how I'm helping him acquire the sauce. <laughs> you th do you think you have more sauce than me? Do you think you have more sauce than sauce than Bruh, bruh. <laughs> Who taught you the sauce, man? You took me. <laughs> man. He's about to get kicked out of the life show. <laughs> man. Yeah. So remember, with the five body weight secrets, you get the um, free sauce guide, which is a whole entire video course on how to acquire the sauce, all right? Sauce can be taught, I promise. It's really good. We're going to do a live stream on just the sauce talk. <laughs> For real. <laughs> How should you know when um, you move on to the beginner level to an advanced level? Well, your body will tell you. Um, like, you just know if you're not a beginner anymore. Like, I know that I'm not a beginner when I can do more than 15 pull-ups. I can do 50 plus push-ups. Um, you know, the beginner exercises are easy for me. I do them as a warm-up now. That's how you know when you're not a beginner. And that's going to take some months to figure out. All right, we're gonna go to 20 minutes. We've been on here for 17 minutes now. Uh, more questions. Okay, I'm gonna scroll. Do I prefer um, outdoor or indoor workouts? So it's going to the weather. Of course, like over the summer, I really like outdoor workouts. I usually work out indoors in the gym, but like outdoor workouts are pretty cool. And you get a really good pump while doing it. I don't know why, but like over summer, if I worked out outside, I would have veins everywhere. It's crazy. What's my max bench press? All right, what's your max bench? Do you know your max bench press? I just tried another day actually, but I'm probably even stronger. I, I don't test it all the time. I realize I'll go and progress quicker if I don't check it. And I try to do workouts around bench press and I don't even train bench press directly. So the other day I got 265 and I had no spotter, so I probably can go over that, mm -hmm. honestly. So that's, that's the max I tried myself. I just yeah. didn't want to risk anymore. I had more energy. I probably could do 280. So yeah. what about you? Uh, I think last time I, I tried it, it was, I can't forget if it was right? 285 or 295. I think it was 285. And how long ago was that? That was over summer. So you train <laughs> around it? Yeah, you probably can hit up to 300 now. I, I, think, I, I think I can hit 300. You, you guys think I can dips, hit three hundred? Right? Weighted yeah. dips. If you do weighted dips, that really contributes the most. That's what helps me mm -hmm. progress a lot. Weighted dips. So yeah, if you train in that often and you're playing push ups and stuff, and that that'll help. Yeah, you probably have three hundred. Let's try it today, man. Should I should I try my max bench press today, guys? Yes, you will. I don't know. Do what you want. If you got the sauce, you will. If I he said if I got the sauce, I'll try my max bench press. You know, sauce and has the sauce, of course. So I might just do it. What skills should you learn? First, um, hmm. the skills that I learned first were the handstand um, and then just planche and front lever progressions. Oh, and L-sit, L-sit, L-sit and handstand for sure. I don't even train L-sit that much anymore. All right, we got one more minute left, guys. Go ahead and ask these questions. And I hope um, if you're going from weightlifting to bodyweight training, that um, gave you some useful tips to start if you're watching after the live stream. Can I come to the gym with you, Jermaine? Yeah. Um, email me where you stay at and I'll make my way over there. We can have a training session. Does overdosing protein cause health issues? I've actually read somewhere where a girl like overdosed on protein, like had too much, I guess, and she actually like died. But I feel like you have to like eat insane amounts of protein to do that. Um, I, I say even like two grams per pound of body weight is fine. Like just don't go like insane, you know, like three grams, four grams of per pound and above. 
like this guy didn't. I mean, Ooh. I'm. I remember you telling me one time like you took like. You t- what was it? Probably the pre-workout. You said mean you- creatine? Yeah, creatine. Oh, man. You took like four, five scoops of creatine. I was listening to Rich Piano, bro. I had to do whatever it takes. Right, I used to take like six or seven scoops of, uh, of creatine back in the day, man. I was watching the, uh, the Bigger by the Day, and so I was trying a bunch of that stuff. Yeah. Say, and it was, it's, uh, it's one scoop per 100 pounds, and I used to take like six scoops before I work out. Six or seven scoops some days. My heart was through the roof, and I had the best workout ever, <laughs> man. So, yeah. yeah. So, hope you guys enjoyed today's live stream. We discussed how you can go from weightlifting to calisthenics, how to make that transition easier. And of course, you know, you have my whole channel and of course my programs and different stuff like that, including the five bodyweight secrets to build muscle even faster to help you out in your training if you're new to calisthenics or if you're intermediate, advanced, all right? So, uh, DX had a great live stream. Thank you. I'm gonna do more of these live streams almost, almost every single day, all right? So, um, Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to check the link down below in the description to get the five secrets plus the sauce guide. I'm going to go help him get more sauce, and we're going to go take the sauce after we get done with this workout, all right? So um, if you don't see the link, refresh this page, and it'll be up there. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Peace.